Hey everyone, so today I'll be going over uh, a game by Akiba Rubinstein versus Karo uh, Hromadka. Sorry if I'm not saying his name right. Uh, Hromadka was a two-time Czech champion, um, and Rubinstein, as uh, some of you may know, is a legendary player. I don't think he ever became world champion, but he is uh, considered kind of like the first modern player. Um... Uh, sometimes I make jokes that uh, he's someone who basically took a time machine from the future, like the 2000s, and went to the past and started playing chess. Um, so I want to go over this game because I think it has a very beautiful tactic. So uh, the game went e4, e5, and now f4. Uh, Rubinstein decides to go into a king's gambit. Uh, a pretty <laughs> risky opening in the modern day. Um, and here bishop c5 was played. Uh, the usual way to play is just to take on a... Um, I'll take on f4, play g5, and try to keep that pawn. Uh, I'm not going to go into that right now. So bishop c5 was played instead. Uh, knight f3, normal development. Uh, d6. Now knight c3. Um, Rubinstein got knights up four bishops. Um, so knight f6 was played. Now bishop c4. Knight c6. And this all looks very normal so far. d3. Obviously white cannot castle because this bishop is covering the g1 square. Uh, black plays uh, bishop g4, just pinning this knight. And notice how the bishop is outside the pawn chain, so bishop e2 is not a very easy move to play. Uh, so h3, trying to break this pin. Uh, this was taken. Queen takes, and now knight d4. Uh, and truthfully, I think black is actually fine here. Uh, after queen g3, I mean, this has been seen before uh, in, a, in a couple of games. Um, and I think black is actually still fine here. Black has pretty decent pieces. And he might castle kingside, he might castle queenside. Um, actually, I think it's white who, who is uh, struggling here because white can't simply um, castle or, or really do what he wants to do here um, because of this bishop. And this knight's well, uh, well placed. So um, now the obvious move here for black looks like knight takes c2. Looks like this just wins material. But actually, it's not clear. After king d1, uh, knight takes rook, it looks like black is just winning here. But actually, after queen takes g7, uh, it's not so clear. Like something like rook f8, and white can take here, uh, and then play bishop g5. And this pin is actually very annoying, um, and it's not simple for black to break it. If he tries bishop e7, you can just play rook f1 here. This knight's also stranded. So not only is this pin very annoying, um, but first of all, white is threatening to just take the knight. The second thing is that this knight is stranded. Um, so black doesn't have an easy way to untangle here, and black is also not going to castle anytime soon. So that is why knight takes c2 was not played here. That's actually pretty short-sighted. So queen e7 instead. Now knight takes c2 is a threat. Point being, and, and I'll show you why. So for example, if, um, if queen takes g7 in this case... Well, then, uh, you could play rook g8, you could play knight takes c2, uh, but let's say rook g8 first, queen h6, and you can now take, and this is very different because now the rook is here, um, and white just doesn't have that sort of pin on the on the knight on f6. So this is a very different position. Um, so queen e7 is a good setup for this. So takes. Now, here, again, if knight takes c2 is played, just king d1, and if this is taken, uh, then you can just take this, and you're hitting the queen, and actually... White is completely winning here. He just wins material. Again, that knight on a1 will just get stranded. So, uh, pawn takes. And now king d1 just covering the c2 threat. Now, it looks a little strange because white's pieces are not really developed or coordinated on the back rank. Uh, the bishop still has to come out. The king is not going to castle. And the rooks are not connected. Uh, also, doesn't seem clear like what white is doing because black is just going to castle or maybe even castle this way, and he has nice pieces. Um, but actually, this is not so clear. Uh, black here played c6 just to cover these squares. Um, but maybe this is not such a great move in hindsight because it does open up this diagonal, um, which is probably a really, it's actually more of a weakening move than a move that actually prevents white from doing anything. Um, so Rubinstein played a4 just to prevent b5. He doesn't want to move his bishop and potentially have his knight kicked eventually. So he just prevents that completely with a4. Rook g8 just covering the g7 pawn. Again, if this is taken, if let's say instead of a4, if this is taken, um, then rook g8 is just very strong because the g2 pawn will fall and suddenly black's pieces are all very coordinated and this king will be cut to shreds. 
So that's why a4 was played. And now rook g8 just to cover it. I don't think rook g8 was necessary, to be honest. Like, I think he could just castle. And he's absolutely fine. Bishop h6 is not a threat. Um, because, first of all, you could just play knight h5 here. And, I mean, there's nothing that white can really do. Like, okay, this. Um, and you could play g6 here. And if this is taken, for example, this rook takes. And actually, I would argue that it's white who has problems with his king. And you can give up um, the dark. You can give up the exchange, but in exchange for that, you get a very nice dark squared bishop. So I don't think that this is what White wants, and I don't think that Bishop H6 is such a powerful threat here. But again, it, it looks scary, so I, I, that's why he probably just played Rook G8. Uh, but now the Black King can never go to the King side. So Rook F1. Um, this does have like some ideas of basically uh, playing Bishop G5 taking and then maybe if the king is not castled uh the rook hangs but of course that's not going to happen here um and here black played h6 again i don't think that bishop g5 is such a major threat he could have just castled queenside immediately if bishop g5 now it's not that strong because after h6 you have to go back with the bishop uh if you take then you're just opening up lines for the rooks so that's not really ideal for white so i don't think h6 was necessary i think he could have just castled immediately but okay, h6 was played. And now uh, knight e2. Just trying to get rid of this knight. Um, white also wants to play c3 and b4 at some point, And maybe start some sort of queenside initiative. Because the only thing that black is going to do here is just castle queenside. So the best thing that white can do is just start an initiative on that side of the board. Especially with this queen looking over this diagonal. So black castles now. I do want to make a note here. Uh, there's I'll show you how this plan might go forward. So let's say... Black decides to take this knight and castle now. I mean, white can just proceed by playing bishop d2, connecting the rooks. Uh, and then after, so let's say something like king b8, uh, b4 is actually a very interesting move. I really like b4. Uh, the point is, is if this is taken, uh, then takes, and then after takes, you can take on e5. And not only that, the b file is now open, and white just has a beautiful position. So... That that's something that I thought was pretty interesting. You could just play b4 here, try to sack the pawn. It's not really a pawn sack though, and then just play c3. The point of c3 is just to prevent rook d4, which would allow uh, knight takes e4 tactics because after takes you just take on c4. So and in this position, white has a beautiful game. He has an amazing queen side, and all he has to do is just really just bring his rooks over, and slowly press on the queen side, and he's just going to win. Um, but that's just how the game could have went. Instead, black just castled immediately. The knight was taken. And now, uh, you have a think. I mean, how should black proceed? Like, how should she, how should, um, he take this, uh, this knight with the bishop, the pawn, the rook? So, black took with the bishop, which is not a good move. Like, at all. Uh, he should have taken with the pawn. This looks really scary, though. Because in a way, you are allowing... Um, you are allowing white access to this diagonal, and it looks very scary because after something like rook f5, suddenly it looks like white's pieces are just beautifully placed. Um, and sure, the bishop is not active yet, but it could always come to f4 or d2. Um, the king can, is actually pretty safe. He could just come to e2 if, he, if the rook needs to come across. Um, and again, white just has this really strong initiative here. Um, so it looks scary, but actually, I mean, something like bishop d6, you could try queen f2, and this is actually not that terrible for black. Black can still survive this if he plays accurately. Uh, tough move to see um, why this is a good move. But the point is you want to co cover um, f7 because there's a lot of pressure bearing down on this f7 pawn. So, but yeah, black is definitely worse here, but not as bad as it was in the game. So going back to this position, um, bishop takes was played. Now, if rook takes was played, this is still better than what happened in the game. Um, you could play here bishop e3, and, you know, you could actually even try to just exchange pieces. Um, black has this possibility, but this is not scary. Um, and after this, I mean, if the computer recommends giving up an exchange, and something has gone terribly wrong for black. So, pawn takes was better, but bishop takes. But now this allows white to just play c3, uh, kicking the bishop back. Um, also covering the d4 square. Bishop b6, now a5, the bishop is pushed back again. Now, if you go something like bishop c5, uh, you could just play um, b4, and after something like, let's say, bishop um, bishop d6, 
Uh, like in the game, you can play king c2, bishop e3, and white has a beautiful position. No problem here. So bishop c7 instead, bishop e3. Uh, king b8 to cover the pawn on a7. That pawn was attacked. Now, you really don't want to play something like a6. I mean, Stockfish recommends this, but this is a really, really risky move because you're creating more dark squared weaknesses. So king b8 makes more sense to me. King c2 is a good move, uh, basically just stepping out of the line of the rook, but also connecting these rooks. Uh, very simple play from, from Rubinstein. Um, king a8. I don't truthfully understand king a8, but again, it's hard to suggest a good move um, for black. Um, there's honestly very little to do here. You can't really do anything about this pawn because then you'd just be weakening your own king. Uh, this knight doesn't have a good outpost to go to. Um, if, let's say, something like knight here, uh, then just queen f2, and suddenly there's a lot of pressure on f7. This knight's badly placed. Um, if you try this, I mean, you could try this, but then this is going to get taken. Um, so it's really just a miserable position for black to play. He just doesn't have any good moves. Uh, if you try something like this, uh, then I believe rook f5 is just very strong, and you could just start piling up on the f-file, and eventually f7 will just fall because the knight cannot be held. So... It's hard to actually suggest a good plan for black here. I mean, what does black really do? He just has to sit around and wait. So king a8 is a good move, <laughs> it's a good move I guess, because it doesn't make black's position any worse. Uh, rook f3. Um, basically, I think the idea was just to pile up on the f-file and look at the f7 pawn. So knight d5. This is an actually an interesting possibility. Um, here, Rubinstein played bishop g1, which is a good move. Um, if this were taken, I think he was just afraid of something like e4, which attacks the rook, attacks the queen, and I think that, you know, attacks e3, and I think that Rubinstein just didn't want to deal with the complications of this, so he kept it very simple and just didn't even bother taking that knight. Bishop g1 is a good move. Uh, the intention is very clear. All he wants to do is play queen f2 and threaten mate. Um, notice how the b6 square is completely covered by the a pawn. Knight f4. Queen f2, very logical. Um, threatening mate, so bishop b8. But you can see how this king is actually completely cornered by his own pieces. And it looks like there might be some tactical possibilities. g3 was played, just kicking the knight. Knight takes h3. Now rook takes f7, which is a very good move. Now, if this is taken, then you just lose material because the knight is still under attack and the bishop has opened its eye against the g8 rook. So that's not working. So instead, um, black tried queen d6 here. Now, I leave it up to you to take a minute to think about what to do in this position um, and find the best move for white. Okay, so, well, let's look at some possibilities here. When I first looked at this position, the reason I even found this game is because I was doing tactics and I just saw this. Um, as, a, as a problem, and I d thought it was a pretty interesting uh, solution here. So I first looked at something like bishop a6, which looks pretty strong. Uh, the threat is very simple. It's just to mate. Uh, this cannot be taken because if rook takes a7, and then after takes, you just mate. So, but black doesn't have to take this. He can just play uh, rook d7, and actually, there's no way through. There's just simply nothing that works here. Uh, I tried to make the queen sack work. I tried to make bishop b7 work. Um, so nothing works here. So I rejected bishop a6. Then I looked at stuff with a6. Also not working because he just plays b6 and there's really no queen takes b6 sacrifice. Uh, the bishop is actually a very nice defender. So I just rejected that as well. Uh, and then I saw this move queen b6. Now this has to be calculated and this is the right move. Um, now what's the point? So okay, if this is taken, well then this just loses. And after this, uh, I think the important move to find here is, uh, well, how do you basically try to make this king, you know? The important move to find here, I think, is bishop a6. Uh, just threatening um, rook a8. Just defending the b7 rook, and there's no way to stop mate. Basically, uh, black would have to give up all his pieces on d3, and after something like rook e7, not even taking the rook, uh, you can just play b7, and there's no way to stop mate. Rook a8 mate is coming after b7. So there's no way to stop this. 
Black would just have to give a bunch of spite checks. Okay, so what about Rook D7, which is the best reply? This is the tricky, this is another tricky move here. Um, and Rubenstein found it. It's Bishop C5. This is just absolutely beautiful. Now, at the same point, again, this queen cannot be taken. Um, because after takes, takes, um, you can simply play takes. And the same thing happens. You can just play bishop a6, and there's really no way to stop this. So that doesn't work. So this, this queen on b6 is actually completely immune. Um, there's really not that many moves to suggest here. If queen c7, you can just take, and after this, um, the rook on g8 falls. So there's just nothing black can do here. Two bishop. I mean, it's just white is just up a rook. So rook takes f7 was played. And now just taking. Now again, the point is, is that after takes, this is actually even worse. Because now this bishop covers b8. So there's no king b8. Um, it's kind of beautiful. Now a bad move is to actually just take this and, and be more greedy. Now this is different, because after queen f6 stepping out of this, you don't even have to take this queen. Um, it's not that clear. Now this could be taken, and actually, because white doesn't have enough pieces to attack this king, it, it he's actually quite safe. And black might have counterplay with queen f2 at some point. Not right now, because the bishop is there. But the queen can enter v uh, via f1 or f3. Um, the knight can reroute, so just not a good way to play this. So bishop f7 is a bad move. Um, so taking is just winning, and there's nothing to do here. Uh, rook f2 was played. Rubenstein, again, very accurately took the rook, uh, giving up his queen, and then just played bishop c5, uh, attacking the knight, and again, the rook is hanging. He played bishop uh, c5 to avoid this bishop being taken. So there, there's a, just a double attack, and black here resigned. But what a beautiful game by uh, Rubenstein. Um, See, so yeah, I was kind of short. Just wanted to look at this game. I thought it was very pretty. I'll probably be looking at more uh, Rubenstein games in the future. I thought this game was just one of the great examples of what kind of player he was. Um, just, you know, very aware of, of like, positional um, advantages. Very aware of, like, how to uh, create an attack. Um, I think, like, first of all, his opponent played kind of poorly. Um, but Rubenstein made, like, basically no mistakes here. Um, in this position, he very just clearly clearly understood the, the consequences of everything. And after something like c6, black already started going wrong. Um, just very calm, very calm peace play. There was nothing complicated here. Um, just he made this guy who was like a two-time Czech champion look like a look like a 1500. No offense to 1500s. <laughs> um, but yeah. Great game. So I'm going to leave the position off here because it's a very nice queen sacrifice. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.